As we look around our own communities and around the world, there can be no doubt of the impact of climate change. And unless we address it urgently, the problem will soon be out of our control. What our Children's Trust has done for myself and for youth all across the nation is to empower us and give us a voice in places where it truly matters, in the courtrooms, in media outlets, in universities, in the halls of Congress, and in the White House, and most importantly, within our own communities, telling our own stories. But we can only succeed with a strong base of individual supporters, and that's where your donations become so crucial in this urgent task that we are attempting to accomplish. We rely on the donations of people like you. So if you see it in your heart and in your budget to donate money to our Children's Trust, you will help us continue this campaign and deal with climate change in a way that will hopefully allow this nation to engage in a conversation around climate change and hopefully solve it. When I was first going to college and I started to be exposed to the issue of climate change and the science of climate change, I came to realize that that was going to be probably the defining issue of my generation and of the generations to follow. It's mostly about the winter coming late. The warmer temperatures are causing the permafrost to melt and the permafrost to melt affects the land through erosion. This year we lost about eight feet in the next few years and we might have to move a house. When it's too hot, the water dries up and then there's nothing, there's no water. These are my goats and my sheep. We're gonna raise them for food in the winter. They could get dehydrated if they don't have water. There were hundreds of homes that burnt in the fire. We were on air alert for like two weeks after that. It was definitely something that affected all of us in some way. It changed people's lives forever. One of the impacts of climate change that we can see is extreme weather patterns like we'll go from a drought to flooding. Floods do really affect what food is available because it can either ruin a crop or cause a farmer to not be able to get to market. Coastal communities are going to face rising sea levels, which means erosion and higher intensity flooding. And a lot of people who live on coastal towns are going to have to move inland. It's not some myth, it's not far away, it's in our own backyards, literally. A lot of people don't make the connection between the health of the environment and the health of people worldwide. And I want them to speak with a child who has asthma because they have a coal plant in their backyard. What they don't realize is that environmental destruction is the destruction of human health. You can't have all the other kinds of justice if you don't have environmental justice. All of the other things that we fight for in terms of racism, in terms of sexism, in terms of all sorts of other kinds of discrimination aren't going to matter if we can't get our basic necessities every day. Our government has this thing called the public trust and it says the air and the water should be protected for everybody to enjoy and it doesn't belong to one single person. This is not about politics or money. This is not about what's most convenient at the time. This is about the survival of my generation. It's about the survival of, of your children and grandchildren's generation. It's about preserving this for every generation to come.